the landscape of North Wales owes its splendour to tens of thousands of years of natural development. Development which has produced mountains, valleys, streams, rivers and plains of infinite variety and undeniable beauty. Like most landscapes in the UK, this has developed alongside man. But when we push too hard, quite often we mess it up. This is the countryside I was lucky enough to grow up in. Here in the Berwyn and South Clwyd Mountains, the landscape is cloaked in blanket bog. A prime example of a habitat that's become degraded for a variety of reasons, but mainly because of human interference. To understand these problems, first we need to understand what a blanket bog is and what an important role it plays in an area like this. Blanket bogs are areas of wet peatland that are only fed by rainwater. They occur in cool areas with high rainfall and form over thousands of years. Vegetation slowly decomposes in waterlogged conditions and forms a layer of peat. Peat depths are half a metre plus, with depths of over five metres not unusual. This layer of peat literally blankets the landscape, giving a habitat that supports some rare and unique species of plants and animals. The blanket bog vegetation in this area is dominated mainly by sphagnum mosses, heathers and cotton grasses. And this unique habitat supports a variety of bird life, including hen harrier, golden plover and Merlin. When a blanket bog is still laying down layers of peat, like this one here, then it's known as an actively growing blanket bog. And these areas are given priority habitat status by the EC Habitats Directive. Why? Because actively growing blanket bog like this is exceedingly rare. Large areas of this habitat are becoming degraded. When this happens, the bog stops laying down peat and no longer supports the same diversity of plants and animals. But does this matter? Is the preservation of these areas important? In a word, yes. Blanket bogs are another of nature's miracles, an ingenious and elegant solution to an ecological problem. Now when it rains up here, which it frequently does, a huge quantity of water runs off the hillside and makes its way down into the valleys. This could lead to flash floods and swollen rivers downstream every time it rains. But the blanket bog prevents this from happening. Peat is incredibly absorbent and it soaks up vast amounts of rainwater. Then, when it stops raining, it gradually releases it into the stream and maintains a constant water level. The natural filtering qualities of the peat also gives the water its purity and clarity, something that Scottish whisky makers know only too well. The peaty water used by distilleries gives the whisky not only its colour, but also its unique flavour. Peat also has this amazing ability to absorb and store carbon. Peat in Britain stores more carbon than all the trees in Britain and France combined. So peat is something of an eco-hero, and blanket bogs like this play a vitally important role in our environment, and they will continue to do so as long as they remain intact and active. But when a blanket bog is damaged, the peat begins to dry out and break down. This leads to a reversal of all the good work the bog has been doing for thousands of years. As the bog degenerates, it loses its ability to hold water. This means that rainwater runs off it, causing flooding during wet periods and, because there's no water in the peat, drought during dry periods. As it breaks down, the peat is carried by the water into streams and lakes, resulting in a build-up of sediment. This reduces the water quality and changes the aquatic environment along the entire length of the watercourse. But that's not all. Do you remember the carbon these bogs have been keeping out of our atmosphere? Well, all that is released back as carbon dioxide, along with methane and nitrous oxides, all greenhouse gases, and doing all the good work that nature has been doing when left alone. But to understand how to preserve blanket bogs, you have to understand how the damage is being caused. These areas are often deep in the countryside, areas that look completely unspoilt. 
But that's not always the case. Because of the nature of the land, it's often used for grazing sheep. To improve grazing over large areas of bog, ditches were dug to drain the peat. This has the effect of drying it out, changing the vegetation, affecting water drainage and quality, and releasing greenhouse gases into the air. Thankfully, the digging of new drainage ditches today is a rare event. But the old ditches have left a legacy that today causes problems that still need remedying. Sheep themselves also bring problems for the blanket bog. They are very good grazers and their appetites can lead to essential plant species being wiped out. Also, farmers use supplemental feeds and fertilizers in this harsh environment. This can actually alter the delicate balance of the ecosystem and lead to the permanent disappearance of plants. As you look around the landscape here at Lake Vernway, most hillsides are covered in dense conifer forests. Planting began here in the 1880s to protect the reservoir from sedimentation. The forests cause problems in two ways. Firstly, they take moisture out of the ground and change the balance of nutrients in the soil. Secondly, they act as a seed source. Conifers are more than happy to self-seed and they don't really care where. In the same way, Prododendron is escaping from our garden and covering vast areas of the countryside. Prododendron spreads rapidly and has a dense canopy, shading and taking moisture from any other species of flora in the area. Non-native trees and plants change the hydrology of the soil and prevent native species from spreading. And these are not the only problems. Fires, started accidentally or sometimes deliberately, can burn the bog's plant species and sometimes affect the peat itself. And the effects of global warming with its longer, drier summers just adds to these problems. So we know that blanket bogs provide a huge natural storage facility for both water and carbon. And we also know 